same time I gave that case study, Norman Peace also uh, gave a case study on the Charlotte Mecklenburg Civic Center. I think not Civic Center, but Governmental Center. And I asked Norman shortly after that if he would come up here and give that same case study to uh, you on our lecture series. And I hope you will find it as interesting uh, as I did. Norman is, uh, is one of our finest practitioners down in North Carolina. He was educated in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Scarsdale, New York Public Schools, North Carolina State uh, University, and Auburn University, where he received a Bachelor of Architecture degree in 1955. In the United States Army, he uh, had service during 1942 to 1946. He rose from private to major in the Corps of Engineers and worked in the American and Pacific theaters. His experience includes several North Carolina firms. He is a member of the American Institute of Architects, the American Institute of Planners, and he's currently a director of the North Carolina Design Foundation. <coughs> He is certified by the National Council on Architectural Registration Boards for practice in the NCARB states. In the past few years, his firm, JN Peace Associates, have received 10 state and or regional awards from the American Institute of Architects, in addition, to design awards from the American Telephone and Telegraph Company and the American Association of School Administrators. I would say that his firm is, has done the only decent work for the telephone company that I've ever seen. His firm's work has been published in Architectural Record, Progressive Architecture, North Carolina Architect, Southern Architect, and Building Progress. Mr. Norman Pease. Thank you, Dean Sappenfield. I know all of you are trying to figure out the dates that were given by Dean Sappenfield. They're just about right. But I think you made me a little younger than I am, and I thank you for that. Uh, you know, one thing that you said, you said, and I'm taking this as a compliment, and I thank you, the only decent work for the telephone company. I don't know whether that doesn't put us in a very good group or not. <laughs> the competition isn't very high. Dean Sappenfield mentioned the design seminar last summer. And if I may, I would like to use the same introduction there because I think it is particularly appropriate to the project tonight. This particular design seminar follows a pattern that the AIA has established for this type of thing. There are several architects, in this case three, who will present a project. In most cases, this project is a project that is not yet built. It probably is in working drawings, or at least the design concept is complete. Now, before this particular seminar began, they invited the moderator, who was Harold Spitznagel, and the three panelists over to the local television station and for some reason, Dean Sappenfield and I were asked to sit out in the lobby while the rest of them appeared on TV. But the question was, I never did figure out why it was, but the question was asked of the moderator uh, by the announcer. We are familiar with the awards program of the AIA. Uh, now, what is this design seminar? Is that the same thing as the awards program? And he said, no, the awards program is more of a post-mortem. The design seminar is somewhat of a prenatal examination. Well, now, I think this is really a good comparison because in medical terms, it is a post-mortem on the awards program. You're taking buildings that have been done, they're there, whether they're bad or good, 
mistakes are there and the good things are there. The design seminar, you're looking at a building before it is built. Now, on the program on the uh, project that I'm going to discuss tonight, it really doesn't fall in either of these categories. It is not post-mortem and is not prenatal. I think it really is more premarital than anything else. I think it's a, a premarital examination. And the reason I say that is because in this particular case, we had husband and wife. In this case, it was city and county. You had two clients, and you had a situation where you had not only to bring them together, but bring the program together to please both of these particular people, groups. Now, if I may, before I get into the project itself, let me tell you just a little bit about Charlotte and Mecklenburg County. We were talking about this at dinner, and I realized that some of the things that are, are present in our own local political and geographical setup are the same as you have in this area. First of all, Mecklenburg County is a relatively small county geographically, but it's the largest county population-wise in the state of North Carolina. There are about 350,000 persons in the county, and within the city, there are over 260,000 people. So you can see that the city itself is primarily the county. The area is growing. Uh, someone asked at dinner how fast the area is growing. I checked a Chamber of Commerce report this afternoon and said it had risen 60%, roughly 60% in the past 10 years. So it is a growing area. We have a form of local government, which is city. The city has its own government, and the county has their government. The only way that we have consolidated truly yet is in the school board. I feel that in the next few years, gradual consolidation, now this is just a public opinion, this is a personal opinion, gradual consolidation will occur. So far, it's only in the school board. I believe when this project we see tonight is well in the way that perhaps the police departments will consolidate. As a matter of fact, the planning well, this project has consolidation in some areas in mind. Ultimately, though, consolidation is not part of this program. Well, so much for the general background, and let's go into the project itself. Some years ago, the city and county, through their planning commission, now incidentally, this planning commission is a consolidated function. Through their planning commission, started the beginning of a governmental center. I think this was a forward step and one that was long overdue. They really started this thing back in 1958. When they finally reached a point that they decided that they had formed a program, they decided this was the time they needed outside professional help to actually put this program down and come up with a working uh, solution that met the program. They interviewed quite a few firms and the two things that they were very firm on in this program, and I think this is important because it's a loose program and yet there are two strong points. One was that they were very definite about the geographical area that was to be covered. There was no question there. It had to be in this area. And the second was that they were very firm as to the types of buildings that were eligible to be in this area. Now, by types, I don't mean design types. I mean it had to be a local, state, or federal governmental type or governmental related function to be eligible for the center. Our team, and this was strictly a team effort, was composed of our firm, who were the architects and planners. We had as our planning consultant, Charles DeVos of Hartford, Connecticut, and a landscape architect, Richard Bell of Raleigh. In addition to these people, we received tremendous help from the Planning Commission, uh, their consultants, the traffic people, city engineering, and all these other people, the school board, were of tremendous help to us. So with that in mind, I'm going into the program itself and give you a little of the background, and then I'd like to review about 20 or 30 slides from the very earliest concepts through to a finished model. There are buildings under construction, but as yet I have no pictures of completed buildings. 
One other thing, um, this is not truly a building design project. It's a planning project, but there is the element of design because whenever you draw anything on paper and you say, here is a building, you know that you can't just, in a final report, give a block. It has to look like something. So let's say that what you will see today, we hope looks like something, but it's not a studied building design. It, rep it represents area, it represents, we hope, the functional requirement that is, is related to area, it represents the needed relationship between functions, but the building itself is not designed. In going about this project, the first thing we had to do was to learn all we could about the program. Now, as I mentioned, this has been worked on since 1958 by the Planning Commission. There were many things to learn, to sort out, to decide which things we needed, which things were part of the present program. We went about this in two ways. We read everything we could, we looked at everything we could, we made many visits to other areas that had either completed similar projects or were in the process of planning similar projects. Now, I think this was probably the most valuable thing that we did. I think that in visiting these projects, we saw both the bad and the good things. We saw a lot of good things, but we saw a lot of bad things. I think that we had the good fortune to talk to the architects, the planners, the city officials, and others who were involved in these programs and most of them were very frank and, and would say, we did this wrong, we think we would not do this again, we found this was bad, we found this was good. Now, the most significant thing was learned during these trips and during this study, in my opinion, was a very simple fact, and that was we felt that Charlotte Mecklenburg was far enough ahead of the game to be able to start, relatively speaking, from the very beginning now, this may seem like a trite statement, but in so many of the largest cities, we found that it was necessary for them to perform really major surgery in order to do anything in the downtown area. This is happening all over. Uh, we're fortunate we have an area that is workable, about 60 acres, almost in the downtown. It was also obvious that the most valuable thing in any urban area is the land itself. Now, again, a very simple statement, but this was brought home to us time and time again. We saw areas in the hearts of very large cities where they were tearing down buildings that were relatively new buildings, certainly had a lot of life left in them, and yet they were tearing them down to get what they had years ago, which was a little open area. Now, we find so often that people want to throw everything up the sidewalk, fill everything with buildings, and we wanted this to be something that we wouldn't have to come back and tear down in a few years to get this, that we already, to get the same thing that we already had. I think probably the most important thing, uh, and this has to do with the land itself, was the need for multiple land use. To me, this is the single most important aspect of the planning. The second thing was the need for a proper interior circulation. Again, these are so basic, I don't think I really need to say them. Interior circulation, ideally based on the separation of vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Now, when I'm talking about interior circulation, I mean within the 60-acre area. Now, if I may get back to the first one just a minute, um, all those 60 acres appears to be completely adequate to take care of the buildings that we now know about. It's rather obvious from the parking needs projected to the year 2000 that we cannot devote the entire site to single use, that is, a single land use. We would end up with a sea of automobiles. As a matter of fact, we'd have no room for the buildings and just cover the whole area with automobiles. So the multiple use of property became an obvious solution. The second solution, uh, based on the separation of pedestrian and vehicular traffic, Again, it's an obvious solution, but we saw quite a few places where this was not done, and where it was not done, uh, I think in every case they wish that it had been possible to do this. 
Our primary consideration to begin with was also to ask ourselves this question. <coughs> what is this center to be? What's it supposed to do? And who is going to use this? We felt again the answer was quite simple. This was to be a center in an area in which there were buildings that would serve the city and county for years to come. And at the same time, it should serve the entire community as a place to work, as a place perhaps for recreation and for cultural activity. If the area could be properly controlled and guided, it could become a place of recreational and cultural activity. It would work for the entire community and it would eventually become an oasis in a downtown area. I realize that everyone is more interested in slides and comments to come, but I, I, and some of the comments to come, but I feel it's necessary, it's necessary to read just a few things, a few paragraphs from the forward in the report that was presented to city county, because I think that will tie in with the slide as we look at the solution. I'm just gonna pick a few paragraphs at random that I think are important. And if I may just read these to you briefly, as important perhaps as the plan itself, is a manner of its implementation and of its administration by present and future generations. This suggests that a policy is needed as much as a plan. First, it is important that the center be considered as a great single entity. Internal differences in property lines must give way to the unity of the whole and the requirements of individual elements be subordinated to those of the center in the spirit of cooperation and interdependent pride. As the center grows through the years and expands to meet the broadening needs of the city and county, new structures will be added and mod modifications to the present plan will naturally occur. Now we think these are a healthy part of the overall pattern of growth and they are not to be and cannot be avoided. But to preserve the unity of the center's design these additions must be sensitively and carefully controlled. It is evident that a well-conceived plan, however strong, can be well executed and kept strong through the years only a, under a system of appropriate controls administered by an enlightened and sympathetic group. Um, this is something that was one of our prime recommendations, and Dean Sappenfield asked me if a governmental commission or a body, some group, had been appointed or signed or put in charge of this project. This report was made 20 months ago, nearly two years. This body was appointed just about two weeks ago. It has been done. It's nearly two years too late, and many things have already taken place, but the body has just been appointed. So we really now have someone who is genuinely in charge of this project. What I'd like to do then is run through a very few slides, bring you up to date a little bit on the area, and then some of the concepts, I'm going to show you pictures of the existing site, sketches in the very, very roughest state, then up to a study model, and on up to a finished model, and then I have slides that reproduce the drawings that were in the report. The report is rather lengthy. I believe you have a copy of it in your library. The drawings that I'll show are reproduced from the report. Uh, Danny, can we have a first slide? Is this in focus? Is this slide in focus? Because I can't tell from here. Is it? Yeah. All right. It's in focus on this side, but it's not focused over there. Let's try it. Come back. How about that? This is an aerial view of the site of the governmental center. I might point out that the downtown area is basically along the top of the slide. You can see buildings in the center of town. Now right through here is the Southern Railway. There's presently a plan which will try, uh, initially they are trying to remove the tracks, reroute the train, apparently this is out, but still there are plans to take care of the railroad, make a boulevard through there, and eventually I feel that this area and this area will try to go very nice. There's only four or five blocks in here, and this 
right there is a part of downtown. The area in the orange is the area that will be occupied by the governmental center. This is approximately 60 acres. On the left, you have the Crosstown Boulevard, which is an expressway, which will soon be a secondary expressway, as they're building another one just as fast as this one, just as soon as this one is completed, they're going to start the next one, and this will become obsolete. But there is another one that's coming right around this one. But this will still remain within the inner loop. Now again, this is the this line right here represents the expressway, the first one, and this will be the ultimate loop around the city. Again, downtown, and this is the 68. Now after we had started our planning. Within the 60 acre track, which was a rectangle, uh, we were told after planning was underway that a bite had been taken out just about in this position. This property had been sold out of the track. And all of this, incidentally, was under redevelopment under the Redevelopment Commission, who had liaison with us for City County, acting as their representative. A bite had been taken out by the Now I'm going to get a large picture of this in a minute and show you the existing buildings and things in the site. But just to show you where we're going to start, we're going to start with our picture of the existing building right at this corner and just go around the track very quickly so you can get an idea of what's in the center. There are existing buildings in this area that are in fairly good condition. They will remain. All of the buildings in here, except the school, which is in this location, and the county office building, which is relatively new, right there. All the rest of them will probably be demolished. Again, starting at the corner, looking west, uh, the only building that you see here that will remain, these two, this is the law building back here, and the attorney's building here. They will remain, although they are owned privately, they will remain within the governmental center track. Again, just moving on to the corner of the law building, this particular street will be closed. Uh, the law building will remain. We'll see that on the plan in a few minutes. This is the courthouse, which is one of several buildings of the same general period and same style that will remain in the area. This now is the seat of the county government. I've moved on around the block. I'm looking behind the courthouse. And now I move further down the hill, looking at the back of the law building and, again, the county courthouse. The city hall, which is just up to your left, is a building of about the same size and the same general character. I show this picture to show one thing primarily, and that is the obvious difference in elevation between this particular street, which is 4th Street, and Trade Street out here. There is a drop through the site diagonally from the northwest corner to the southeast corner, or about 30 feet. Now, I think this is fine. I think we can make it work for us on the site. The streets drop down about 30 feet. Again, this is the school that we found will probably remain on the site. You know, it's a funny thing about doing a project like this. You have a program that's pretty well established, but you have two owners. You have this man and wife situation. And the man and the wife haven't read the program, and so one thinks the school is to be torn down, and the other one thinks it is to stay. And so you end up designing it both ways. But so actually you will see some solutions here that show the school in some cases and other cases have been demolished and other buildings put in its place. Again, showing the difference in elevation of the site. This is looking from the rear of city halls. It's looking to an area that has been completely cleared this was all full of substandard residences. They have been cleared out. And you can see a drop that is obvious from here to probably the lowest point down in this area. This is one of the very, very early and scratchy plans. I'm going to turn that off now. I don't think I need it. You need it? No, it turned off. This is one of the very earliest and scratchy plans after 
uh, good bit of thought, somebody started doodling. I show it to you just because it's a beginning. At the top of the street is Trade Street. Town is to your left. This is high point, high elevation on the site, and low elevation is just about in the end. Then it rises a little bit to get up to this point. Sloping generally in this direction. The buildings are outlined in yellow. I hope you can read that yellow. From the back there are the existing buildings, and these are the buildings that will remain. Uh, this one should have been had y'all on that too. They will remain. The rest of the buildings on the site, which now line this street and a few miscellaneous ones in here, will be destroyed. Just one of many, many schemes that was thrown out, and I think you can look at it and see why it was thrown out. Uh, just a thought. I'm showing these two in their crudest form, and I think you can see why things are thrown out. Again, trying to tie in these different elements until eventually we, were, we came to this point, which I guess you could call a pinwheel type of scheme. It's primarily based on this assumption. There are three basic parking areas. There are about 3,000 cars to park in the center, and the three basic parking areas are represented here, here, and the largest one here. Well, this seemed to work very well. We could take advantage of our slope down. A parking level at this elevation would be one full story above a level at this elevation. Using the roads themselves for ramps that all seemed to work pretty well. We tried to tie the whole thing together and to get some strong element. In this case, pedestrian mall which seemed quite necessary. We needed something with some strength in it. We wanted to tie this, and frankly, it started off, I think, as a hodgepodge. I think it's been cleaned up, and I, I hope that as we go along, you will see the evolution of the team. That's it. This is about the same as the other. I don't remember, frankly, whether this church entered into the early ones or not. This is a bite that was taken out. Uh, it's an unfortunate thing, but it's one of these things that happens. This piece of property was taken out of the total governmental center and sold to a church during the very early stages of planning. You notice that we have introduced water into the scheme. This is the very lowest area, and this was one of the initial attempts at the introduction of water. Someone asked me earlier, what does the water do? Well, it doesn't really do anything. It just sits there, and I hope it looks good. Uh, it's not used for the air conditioning. And if you say, if it doesn't do anything, why is it there? Well, I think it really has a function, and, and that function is to look good and to be pleasant. We thought that what we could end up with is not just a sea of buildings, or rather a sea of automobiles. Come back. not just a sea of automobiles, but a park-like area in which there are buildings. Another reason for doing it this is that we know these buildings will be built over a period of many years. We realize that it will be built in increments, and we've got to allow for that. Uh, again, on this drawing, the red buildings are the existing buildings. At present, under contract, in the design stage, this building right here, which is an educational center. It's really an educational administration building for the consolidated city county school. Uh, this building right in here, which is the county jail. Notice we have closed Meyer Street going through here and the building here, which is law enforcement. These two buildings tie in very closely, and you'll see that they tie in, tie in even more closely in the later drawings. Now, this was as far as we went in our initial report to City County. This was a preliminary report, and after much discussion and consultation with traffic consultants and others involved, it was decided that the only thing really wrong with this program was the traffic situation. We realized that we had put most of our parking in this area. It was felt that this one large garage was not 
would not be adequate, the garage is adequate, but the street serving it would take too much traffic from these two points at peak hour. So although we kept the same basic scheme of three, three primary parking areas, we decreased the size of this, enlarged these, and made a few other changes. You'll notice that in the block, block at the bottom, we have the school. And I know it's right interesting, when we made this first report, the school was there. And when we made the report a little later, the school was gone. And of course, the question from the floor was, what happened to our school? And the man said, I hope that uh, you assume that by the year 1985, we'll all be so well educated in one of these, these schools. Well, the way this came about, the city and the county school board decided it was worth a try to see what would happen if this school were phased out. There had been some discussion of it, but in the past few months, they have decided the school will remain. It'll be rebuilt, perhaps even demolished, and a new school built on this site, which will be the only really in the city high school, so they're going to maintain this site. Now, this is nothing more than a very rough, and as you can see, the pieces of paper are sliding around on the site. They weren't even pinned down in some cases or taped down. And you'll see that at the bottom, I just thought you might be interested in seeing how this little simple model, which was a study model, was made. At the bottom, the school is shown. In this case, I wanted to put a large building over it to see what might happen on a parking deck. Again, it's just a piece of paper on a hasty model of the site. I'll give you an idea, though, of the general composition of the 60 acres. Now we go to the drawings that were eventually presented in the final report. I'm not going into the actual layout of the plaza itself, the center itself, until I get to the larger scale drawing. But this drawing is just to show the relation of town. Center of town, these are the railroad tracks, and incidentally, this has been turned 90 degrees from the other picture. This is the main street in town, and I'll say that this is the second most important street. And you can see there's only one, two, three, four, five blocks between the center and the center of town. Within easy walking distance of the center of town, and I frankly believe this property right in here would become extremely valuable commercial property. I think that the traffic from here to there is going to be great. I think there'll be a lot of pedestrian traffic, so I think it's going to be very valuable if these tracks can be properly handled. This is a plan that was finally presented for the year 1907. I think you will see in this some relation all the way through from the earlier sketches to the final plan that was adopted. I think the primary change, perhaps, is relocation of law enforcement, uh, a shifting of the educational building, and in this case, we show the school at this particular time. You notice we have enlarged the water area I believe that all we can do without the water in these two areas. I think we will maintain this. I hope we can. Again, the overhead pedestrian walkway, which I think is a visual and physical tie of the entire area. This particular street is one way going into town. The majority of the people who work in this area will generally live in this direction, generally in the southeast. This street is one way going out in town, and this street is two way. So you see, we'll have good service within the area. There is a transportation center under here. Cars, buses, taxis come in here, let the passengers out, and go out, and get off, walk undercover to any of the major buildings in the center, or you can get up on the plaza on good days, and we hope it will be a pleasant and enjoyable experience in the area. This is one thing, we want the whole area of the ground, the decks, which are the tops of parking lots, the plaza itself to be used. They can be used for art displays, for concerts, for all kinds of things. We think this is important if this center is to be kept alive. This is the year 85, and you notice there's been only one major change. Uh, a few things have been changed in addition to the county office building in the earlier drawings. We showed the addition down at the bottom. 
This was just an indication of addition. The architecture was a poor solution. The addition is over here on top of this part of the deck. We have covered up the ground parking that was there for the initial, uh, for the year 1975. This is the ultimate solution, not the year 2000, and the school has disappeared. It has since been announced as a large post office that we built to the site over here, which I think will add even more to the governmental center. This is just a very quick look at the parking plan. These are still three basic parking areas. These are parking buildings. Uh, this in here is three floors. Again, a drop from here down to there and then up to here. So we can take advantage of the slope. This parking is all one level parking, and in this case, it is a service area for police and law enforcement. This is not just parking, but a real service area for the police. These sketches, again, part of the report, uh, are the ones that I mentioned when I said there is some element of design. Uh, we have not tried to design buildings, but this particular building represents the square footage that was given to us by city that they would need in the year 2000. So, in some respect, it does represent design. We couldn't just show blocks as we did in the earlier model. Uh, so there is a small element of design. And again, another view down the plaza, or a view down the plaza. This is look, looking at the back of the old courthouse, and to the left is the old city hall. To the right is the existing county office building, and to the left is the tower that you saw a few minutes ago. Again, a view of the city office tower. Uh, looking into the transportation center, which is between 3rd and 4th Street. This is an overall view of the site, looking from Independence Boulevard, the school. There was a school right in this area. This is the area that we think we may ultimately build in. Educational building. Uh, this is the church. So taking this light out of the project, I have no idea if the church will look like this. I understand it's going to be Georgian, I don't know. But it's being designed at this time, and I, I think it will be a Georgian church. Now, this is not part of the project. This little building, which was added probably, I think it did show in the year 2000, is a civic and cultural activities building. Now, don't ask me what's in a civic and cultural activities building, because I think with a name like that, it can be anything. And the idea was to have something in here, whether you have a little auditorium, meeting rooms, and the thing that people need a narrative of this type. And this name seemed to let it fall in the program by calling it civic, so we called it civic. Uh, this is the city office building, county office building existing. This is the addition, jail, uh, law enforcement building, and here again, existing city hall, county office building, and law building. And I'll tell you one real interesting thing, I think the way I get to the other model. This is an overall picture of the model that shows the entire site. Now, this view is exactly 180 degrees from the last drawing. Before, remember this uh, office building down at the bottom of the screen. This is a view looking from uh, Trade Street. I remember when I showed you the pictures of the existing site and started right at that corner? I think there was an SO station on this corner. We moved right on up. Here's the old attorney's building, and here's the law building, county courthouse, city hall. And we went all the way around. We came back in. We showed a picture of the school that was on this site. And we moved on up this street. I think I showed you uh, some, some ground in here. Now, one interesting thing that has come about since this whole thing started, we had a public hearing on this, and everybody saw this about 20, 22 months ago. At that time, uh, there were no comments on the closing of streets. Everybody approved it. But about, uh, I guess, 60 days ago, the owner of this particular building announced that they would oppose the closing of this street between there and there. Well, this almost got to court, and I think in a, the last-minute decision, they finally came to an agreement. They will not close this. They will not uh, take the thing to court. They will close the street 
and the law building people uh, have been given certain parking areas. They didn't have any anyway, so I don't know why they felt they needed some now. But they will have certain parking areas. The street will be closed, and I think, very frankly, it will make that parking much more valuable to be in the center of this pipe. Behind it is the jail building. Now, originally, if you will remember, the jail was a rectangle. Well, again, the building had not been designed. When it showed as a rectangle, it was only so many square feet on so many floors. This model was made from the drawings after an architect had been employed and the actual jail was designed. This is really the building. So this represents its true size, which is not as high, it is more nearly square, and it's a lot wider building. It covered a lot more of the area than anticipated, although the street was anticipated to be closed originally. And again, just another view, getting a little closer on the model itself. I thought perhaps you'd like to see pictures of the model. I noticed the models that you've made in the room, they're excellent. And the boys, the, the men that made this model are Clemson College graduates. They finished, I guess, about two years ago. They made the model in their spare time. I shouldn't say in their spare time. They uh, contracted for the model. And incidentally, if you're a good model maker, that's a good way to uh, do a good job and make some money on the side. They were actually, they had a contract for the model job itself. Now, this particular picture of the model is, again, looking at the school site in this direction looking up toward Trade Street at the top of the screen. I thought we'd run through these quickly and you can ask any questions, and I'll try my best to answer them if I can. One other thing about this water. Um, this is a low area. In wet weather, there's a stream in there. We know that we're gonna have problems with it. Our thought is not that it be truly a stream but that if it is a pond, it'll have to be carefully controlled. I think it'll add a great deal to the project. One of the county commissioners said, and I, I don't blame him, he's a sailing enthusiast, and he said, now how in the world can you sail a boat in a little place like this? And I think he's right. So before it was presented, the sails were taken off the boat. Norman, how many, how many people will work in the center? Do you, do you have the picture? Uh, I do have them in the report. I'd have to look them up. There are about 3,000 parking spaces required, but I believe that the number of people who will be permanently employed in the center will be about 2,500. Now, the reason for this is so many uh, classes, uh, instructional things are held, for instance, in the educational center. The sheriff's department has cars in part of the time, but actually employed in the center will be about 2,500. This last slide might just give you an idea of the size of the model with the model makers. Let me go back to one of the typical uh, model pictures, and if you have any questions, maybe you can, you'd like to have the, let's see, where do I want to punch there? If you have any questions you'd like to ask about the planning, about the job that our firm did, or about anything about the building, I'll be glad to try to answer them the best I can. I'd like to say that this was strictly a planning project. It was extremely interesting. We ran into the thing that, frankly, we never considered. It could not be shown on a program. We learned many things. I was talking about the man and wife situation. We found out that in the middle of the plan, suddenly this little piece of property is owned by the county, and this little piece of property is owned by the city, and therefore this building can't cross the line. And finally, we just got to the point where we had to say, now this must be a single tract of land. 
and they agreed to this and things worked out beautifully. But now, unfortunately, 22 months later, some of this has been forgotten. And I hope that this commission will be able to keep the plan going ahead in the way it was originally planned. I've enjoyed being with you. I've hurried through this because I wanted to save time if you had questions. How many, uh, how many months was your office working on the project? We worked on the project about, uh, about eight months, about eight and a half months. But understand that before this, a lot of groundwork had been done by the Planning Commission and others with City County. But our office was engaged about eight to nine months on the project. What, what was your fee for the project? The fee for the total report was $15,000. Now, I'll tell you something. This uh, is a matter of interest. Of the five firms interviewed, uh, I think every one of them told them that this was not an adequate fee. This may seem ridiculous because obviously the model didn't cost $15,000. But there was a great deal of study that is only represented by a relatively inexpensive model. I think we found this, uh, Dean Sappenfield, that the fee was a fee that could cover adequately the report and the study that was needed with the help that was given by consultants already employed by city and county. You see your traffic, uh, engineering, a lot of your other people were already employed. So we felt it was adequate. I think that uh, I'm not sure, frankly, whether we made any profit on it or not. I don't know. The paper said the fee was $30,000, but that is not correct. Are there other questions? I can't. Right here. Is there a Yes. Now, I will say this. To cross that water, you've got to go across a little bridge way up at the end. But that's the only place where you really have to get out from under it. If you don't want to go up there, you can certainly walk under it. Yes, there is a ground level. Let me just point out one thing, if I may. This is one way going this way. And this is when they come back. You may turn in here with your car, let somebody out, come out, and come back out this way. Of course, you can come in here, come in, and you must go back out that way. But the actor, you can get out and walk to the buildings underneath or get up on the plaza and walk on the plaza. Now, in Hartford, Connecticut, we ask the same question. It's a different type of thing. It's really a commercial situation there. But they said that it was strictly a matter of weather, but that in good weather, everybody was up on top. They walked up the steps just to get on top in good weather. It was only in the bad weather that they were underneath. So we felt that the plaza really had a definite advantage. First of all, we felt it was necessary to get from here to there. We picked up the ground elevation at the courthouse, carried it across 4th Street, stepped down a little, went on across third, and then stepped down again. We have tried to step down in increments so that this plaza would never get to an overpowering height. In other words, it is just high enough here for trucks to get under, and we step down so the same thing would occur here. We think this gives a very definite link. Now, one thing we also found out, there, these people right in here do not necessarily need to go to these buildings. There are a few things in common for the building, but there isn't a lot of traffic from here to there to there. There will be a certain amount of traffic, and we think that we want to encourage the traffic, really. We want to encourage people to come into this area, and, I, and that's for several reasons. One is that it'll die on the weekends. We realize that. On Saturday and Sunday, if there's not, if there's something, if there isn't something in there to bring people into the center, we thought it would just be a dead area, and I think this is bad. That's why a thing like this, where activities could be held, we hope that this can be a park in the downtown area. Um, incidentally, there are buildings all around here. We were told on this model to just cut it off right here and forget these buildings, but this is in, a, in essentially a downtown area, so there are buildings all around it. I think if this is built, these buildings will be demolished, and buildings of a different type and different character, these are relatively uh, inexpensive stores, 
uh, filling stations, things of that nature. The question right back here, I can't see all the hands, I'm sorry. How many uh, public hearings did you have to go through here and did both units of government uh, uh, finally adopt this? Both units, the answer to your last question is yes, both units of government have adopted the plan and are working together, I think, very well to see this carried out. The answer to the first question, we went through two official public hearings. We're going to have a review hearing the 27th of November, although the plan is already adopted. The buildings, perhaps to further answer your question, this building, the construction contract is awarded and this one is under construction. This building right here, the jail, is out for bids. The building right here, uh, the contract, the architect has a contract. He's well in the way with this one. Now, I will show you one change that has taken place in that building. Let me go back to another slide, which I think uh, originally, it was thought that when this area became part of the governmental center, it was obvious that this link should go on time with him. We wanted to terminate this long walk with two strong elements. We had the courthouse here, which is a strong element. We wanted something down here to terminate this. It was felt that the building would do that very well. I think if you do that, it makes the distance look shorter. Also, the step-down areas will make it look shorter and not just a long, straight bowling alley type of thing. Now, this is quite a wide plaza, so I don't think it will look too long, but we want to terminate this building that is under contract, which is a school board building, has now moved over and will terminate the pedestrian plaza at this point. Reason being that the school itself will occupy that site, and unfortunately, this would preclude uh, the government release the plaza going on if the school is not built. Now, I don't know if this will be the final solution to move this over or not, but this is what is being recommended by the school board, and I imagine it will be adopted. But we do have three buildings that are under contract, and the entire plan has been adopted by city and county. There's a question right over here. If it's quite possible by the year 2000 that the county and the city are going to be the same, uh, was any consideration given to building two separate units, one for the city and one for the county? Now, why The question was, if, if it's possible that consolidation will be a reality, say, in 2000, was any consideration given to building two separate units? Now, by that, do you mean two separate uh, governmental centers or something? No, you have one building that you said was a city building, not the county building. Well, consideration was given to this, and let me tell you what the answer was. This consolidation is so far in the future that they felt that they had to have the two buildings at this time. This building was a long way off. This building exists, this is a county building, this is the addition that will come to this building. This building will probably be built before consolidation. Now, I think if consolidation comes, all it will amount to is that we will have the functions of city county in these buildings. This will not be as convenient as if they were in one building, but at least they will be connected and they can get from one to the other. Consideration was given to this, but the program called for the two buildings. Why was the Civic Activities Center removed from that access from the walkway? Why so far away? Why isn't that bridge all right under that like Well, the Civic Activities Building, which had no program, each one of these buildings had a program. The Civic Activities Building had no program, and I will answer your question as frankly as I can. It was an afterthought. It was a requirement after everything else had been adopted and was felt that they really wanted to be, the people who were pushing this particular thing, wanting to be removed from this. Now, frankly, I think it's a real good question. It was felt that this would be used more by outsiders coming in than by the people in these buildings. These buildings will have, within the building, little auditorium, meeting rooms, and these things. This is primarily an outsider-type thing. They did not want to be 
up near a pedestrian walkway. Well, I think it's a real good question. Any other questions while I'm around here? How many access do you have for people coming from uh, ground level up to that pedestrian walk? Can you get, it, get onto it from the sidewalks? Uh, yes, you can. Their detailed planning has not been complete on this. We had in mind that from every major sidewalk, from every major street, there would be access to it. We noticed that in the cities we visited where elevated walkways were used, they had one just about at every point possible. Uh, I think it'll take a bit more study than this overall plan has had to determine exactly where and how many there should be. We have indicated some access, as you can see. There was another question over here. Uh, so the the parking garage is being taken into consideration and the building is being built so the garage can be built. Now, this was a very big issue because they wanted to have entirely surface parking for this building. They are the largest single user of all of them. They wanted to buy a lot of land and use all of it for surface parking. This would have uh, done away with the water, but to put the buildings out it's a sea of automobiles, which is what they have now, and quite a controversy uh, came from this, and city county held out very strongly on this point, and I'm real proud of them, because they wanted this building in there. The school board could have moved out to another site. They could have done this, uh, but both city and county wanted them, but they were very firm on this, because it was the first building that was really more or less testing this uh, under, not underground, I've made a mistake for using that word before, this hidden parking. Sir? Or, yeah. Uh, why, as a planner, do you feel that this scheme should be so contained and terminated at those uh, ends of the axis, as you've shown it? Well, I feel that it should be contained or terminated at the end of the axis for this reason. First of all, this is the end. Uh, I realize that you never know where the end is. I know that it's happened, I think, in the year 2000, some of these buildings may have been demolished. But I feel that a walkway that is too long is just visually, if it's too long visually, I don't think the thing will be used as much. I really think it's bad to see where you're going, to know there's something there, and that's, that's the only reason for it. Uh, there is no reason for a physical termination other than the visual effect that you get, I think, by looking down the plaza. Now, I don't know if I've answered your question, but this is a reasoning behind it. I a question uh, with regard to the growth of the Did the next one continue to grow at the same rate it has the last 10 years? Uh, and if it does, uh, you're going to have by 2,000, you know, 800,000 or million people. And, uh, the whole inner city problem that we have now, uh, with this location with regard to downtown, uh, heavy pressures of ghettoization at least on three sides of it, uh, and the number of people coming into it each day with the population that size is going to be multiplied by three or four. Well, I believe there are two factors that were considered by the planners on this particular point. One was that when consolidation comes, then theoretically, the number of employees in here is not quite as great as it is when you have the two governments. Now, I say theoretically, I don't know whether this happens in reality or not. And the other is that there's ample area within the 60 acres for additional buildings. I believe a building such as this, which I think will be obsolete by the year 2000, long before that, I think this building, which is almost obsolete at this time, will disappear. They're privately owned now. I think they could be acquired. This is just a guess. I think things like this will happen. I think that this building, which is being extensively remodeled inside, will always be there. I think that there's a possibility that this building will go. 
But I think the interesting question is that the area probably will grow, whether it will continue at the present rate, I don't know. The projected rate uh, is about the same increase. Now, of course, we both realize that one reason for this increase is taking more people into this particular area. In other words, this 60% that I mentioned for city is compared to 40% for the county. So you probably got an average in there, not of 50, but of about 55%. Uh, I don't know whether this will continue. But the thought was that quite a bit of land in here, and frankly, this is one reason we were hoping that this would remain as our expansion area. And this was the thought, that this would be the last lot in the belt. Initially, it's going to be developed right from here forward. This will come, and this will be the last area. But if the school remains, and it looks today like the school will remain, we have lost that expansion. Lost that possibility in this two block, or three block area. We have a major path priority that is projected just over the boundaries there above it someplace. Uh, yes, it's uh, quite a ways away, really. It circles around over here. That's correct. Question. Is there much uh, circulation between the will that you the education center and the, uh, <coughs> there, that, uh, yeah, the education office and, and the school? And the school, initially there will be. Initially they will use part of that school property for their surface parking. Now, I didn't answer a question a minute ago, and this reminds me of it. I'm sorry, someone asked about parking that. I'm afraid I'll be trapped. Uh, they held out this parking deck and they agreed with the school board that initially they would have surface parking and that the building would be so designed to allow for the parking directly under the building so that the major parking structure could be built at a later date. In other words, the elevation would be established to permit the parking deck. Now, this is really quite a tricky thing to do. I think it can be made to work, and I think it's going to work very well. But these people will use some of this initially for parking. I don't think there'll be much traffic between here and the school itself. I don't think the teachers, except perhaps maybe once or twice a year from this school, will have any reason to come to this building. Uh, where do people work in the school parking car? Is it on the surface there on the same block as school? Well, when in this plan, the school wasn't there, yeah. so we didn't have this consideration. The people that work at the school will park on this school site, and at present, they park on the surface, and I assume the school board will still have surface parking on the school site. As I say, our part of the planning did not consider that as a school except in the initial stage. <laughs> 